After seeing the quite frankly woeful story of Mahavir Ikunathan and his 2019 Formula 2 season, I honestly thought I'd never see anyone else in F2 quite as bad as him. And to be honest, apart from Alessio de Leda, we probably won't. But of course someone has to take that last place in the championship every year. And for 2020, this prestigious award went to someone who, from comparing them on paper, actually did a worse performance than Lord Rags in F2, if that's actually possible. Although he had better pace than Mahavir did, his results were somehow worse, so what on earth happened? It's the 2nd of October 1996 in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Damon Hill has just won the German Grand Prix, and this guy has just been born. Who is he, I hear you asking, and if you don't know who it is yet, I'll give you another clue. He drove for Campos last year. This is of course the guy who scored a grand total of zero points in the 2020 Formula 2 season. And here's the story of his career, Gilherme Samaya. Gilherme Samaya started his racing career in 2012, like most drivers, in racing versions of lawnmowers, aka go-karts. He was racing in the Florida Winter Tour Karting Championship, and he was up against the likes of McLaren IndyCar driver Oliver Askew and Juan Manuel Correa, so a good chance to prove his worth. Although unlike these drivers, he didn't do anywhere near as well, finishing 47th in the whole competition, out of 63 drivers, whilst Askew won the championship, and Juan Manuel came 6th. So it wasn't an amazingly promising start, but that doesn't matter so much, because it was his first ever year of racing, so he'd try again for the next year. Oh wait. 16 year old Gilherme here decided that finishing 47th in his first year of racing was enough to get into cars, which makes Giolano Alesi look like Sean Galil. So sure enough, in 2013 he'd make the step up to the Brazilian Formula 3 Championship, then called the Formula Junior Brazil Championship. That's correct, 47th in karting and straight to Formula 3. Although he only competed in two races of the season, he picked up 10 points, which I guess he could have done worse but he was far off the pace of the leaders, none of which have made it higher than Stock Car Brazil in their career. He'd then take a sabbatical for 2014, so he looks a lot more like a motorsport fan whose dad has a big wallet than a professional future F1 talent. But for 2015, he was back on the Brazilian F3 grid, this time racing full-time for Cesario F3 team. Racing in the secondary lights class, he took 6 wins and 13 further podiums which sounds quite good, right? Well, yeah, it's not bad, but he wasn't up against any competition at all. 90% of the field weren't professional, so it's basically like the Boss GP series. It means absolutely nothing. In 2016, he'd move up to the primary class of the Brazilian F3 Championship, where he'd stay until the end of 2017. He finished second in 2016 and first in 2017, with a combined total of 16 wins and 24 podiums which is pretty dominant. So that sounds great, but again, he wasn't up against anyone particularly special. I mean, only two other drivers on the grid had Wikipedia pages, and according to them, they hadn't made it past Formula Renault. So this doesn't say particularly much. This championship is also less equal than the 2020 F1 season, where some drivers were driving cars 10 years older than others. So I'm sure the fact that Samaya was driving a 2011 spec car against 2001 cars definitely aided his campaign. And so far, the only time where he, in his career where he was actually up against any decent drivers, he finished 47th, whereas they were in the top 6, so it doesn't really boast a great driver so far. However, in 2017, alongside his Brazilian F3 campaign, he'd race in Europe as well, in the British F3 Championship, as well as the second half of the Euro Formula Open Championship. Brilliant! Racing in Europe, a chance to interest F1 teams or make an actual impression, or something like that. But no. You see, Although he's racing now in Europe, the Euro Formula Open Championship does not have any particular talent, more a cheaper option for racing in Europe, a reason why Marino Sato is 2019's champion. So not up against too, some too difficult competition in Euro Formula this year? Maybe Samaya could do well like he did when he was in Brazil. Again, no. He had a best finish of 9th this year, putting him 17th in the championship with 7 points. In his British F3 campaign, he was up against drivers such as Inam Ahmed and Cameron Daz, who were in FIA F3 last year, but weren't so great compared to the FIA F3 field when they were winning British F3, meaning that again he wasn't up against some great talent. But he still managed to be at the back, finishing in the standings as the last driver who competed in all rounds, most of the time only finishing around 10th. So again, 
pretty disappointing. For 2018, he'd have another crack at Euro Formula Open, with RP Motorsport, and there was some better talent in the field this year, such as Felipe Drogovic and Ben Viscal. But he still did pretty embarrassingly, be it he f did finish 6th in the standings, but he was consistently low down on the points, not really against anyone particularly special, and was way off the pace in qualifying. He'd then stay in the series again for 2019, well, there was again some better talent, such as Liam Lawson and Yuki Tsunoda at some points, but otherwise the best driver in the field was Marino Sato, which says quite a lot. Samaya so didn't really have any special results, although there was a second place in Paul Ricard. He then gave up on his campaign mid-season, although he then returned for the Winter Series. But were there results? No, of course not. He only managed 6th, again, but with no competition. So, so far in his not very long racing career, the only time he's done decently was when the AI was set at zero, and when he was actually against some competition, he was nowhere. Although Euro Formula Open is often a stepping stone before FIAF3, and with the nature of money in today's motorsport, you don't necessarily need talent to race in series like that if you've got money, which is basically a summary of Gilherme Samaya. So perhaps he would be a paid driver in F3 or something the next year. Not like anybody would actually want that, but it could be his future and he could learn something. I'm giving him a chance here. But no, Gilherme Samaya would race for Campos, a pretty decent team, in FIA Formula 2 for 2020. What the- It's the fact that he was beaten in Euro Formula and British F3 by Cameron Daz, a driver who, other than living basically in the same place as I do, couldn't score a point in FIA F3 for 2020. Which means that if he beats Samaya, Samaya probably wouldn't do great in FIA F3 either. So the fact that this guy got a Formula 2 seat and the 25 people who beat Das in F3 didn't is a bit... E. But th that's the nature of motorsport now. Pay drivers everywhere getting seats over actual talent. Damn, I should have reworded that as an acronym for Alessio de Leda. Never mind. So here comes his F2 season. The first time he's fully up against some proper competition. So we could see how he fares to drivers that Formula 1 teams have invested their future into. And oh boy, did we get to see how he compared. The opening round in Austria. He was a second and a half off the pace on the shortest track of the year, behind drivers like Alessi and Galil. Although this was actually one of his best qualifyings of the season. 19th place. In the races in Austria, he managed a whopping 15th and 16th places and then 20th and 17th in Austria point 2. And if you thought those results were lacking, they only went and got worse. There were several races in the season where he didn't even make the top 20, and in the Sake feature race he finished 22nd. Great result. His qualifying pace since Austria did not get any better either, with him being an average of over 2 seconds off the pace. Which yes, is better than Raikunathan's pace, but not anywhere near on the level of other F2 drivers, or the catastrophically large list of drivers I could name who deserve this seat more than him, which is almost as large as mine. He did have a standout performance season in it, though, the Monza Sprint Race. Absolutely amazing result he could be boasting home to his parents about, his best performance of the season by a very long way, yes it actually was, and I'm sure Formula 1 teams thought this was beautiful. Where did he finish? Brace yourselves everyone. 14th. His best performance all season was P14, which he only achieved once. This meant that not only did he finish 24th in a 22 car championship, he finished behind Jake Hughes, who only finished one race in an HWA. So after the catastrophic season he had reminiscent of Narain Carthur Kane, you'd never have guessed it, but another team wanted him. Shuru's racing system. This is pretty cool because I didn't see the announcement that Ralph the Dog had taken over as team principal of Shuru's, but I guess he did. So Shuru's ran him in the 2020 postseason test, where he managed to grab P10 in one session, which is actually pretty good for him, although a test isn't where people generally push the car to its limits. So again, it doesn't boast much. Will we see him in 2021 on the F2 grid? I mean, I hope not, but unfortunately, it's quite likely we will. So I don't mean to bring offence to Samaya, he is practically a robot and his eyes look fake. Thank you to John Warren for that incredible quote, make sure to subscribe to him. I'm sure Gil Herme can do a whole lot better job in a Delara F2 car than I can, but all my point is, is that he doesn't deserve the seat over other drivers bouncing around the paddock who don't get it. And although I don't think he deserves a 2021 seat at all, he's quite likely to. And if the minds at teams are clever enough to pick Alessio de Leda to drive their car, please don't sue me, I'm sure Samaya can get a sp seat pretty easily. So there's the short history of Gilherme Samaya's career. In short, 
nowhere near as good as anywhere else. Formula One teams can invest in much better people. And Brazilian fans, please don't hate me, I don't personally dislike Gil Hermé, there's just much better talent out there. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and follow my social media. Nothing here is meant to cause offence, and you should take it as jokes. But with that, I'm Daniel, have a nice day.